Today I had one thing happen to me that has never happened to me since I've been on YouTube, and that is a viewer opened a case on me. Hello everybody, welcome to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin, or Commonwealth Flipper. I'm just gonna say Commonwealth Picker. Y'all y'all get the difference, right? Hey, we didn't have an overwhelming amount of sales today. I think we sold 15 things, but five were in a man. So only 10, only. Some of you are like, I'd love to have 10 sales. Some of you are like, I couldn't survive on 10 sales. We're all in different places, I suppose. So I had 10 sales other than in a man today. Had one Bonanza sale. Had two clothing sales that I'm really happy about. Gave us a pretty good profit, even though 10 sales is kind of the minimum these days. We still have a pretty decent little profit. And really, 10 sales for me lately, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. I normally sell 15 a day, but I'm okay with, you know, plus the Inaman, but I'm okay with 10, especially right now that I'm back in school and really been quite overwhelmed with quite a bit of stuff. And I just can't wait every day to get in here and show you guys what's sold. We appreciate you coming by. But today I had one thing happen to me that has never happened to me since I've been on YouTube. And that is a viewer opened a case on me. So it's an interesting story. I don't think it's quite as bad as it sounds. At least I don't think it is anyways. And we're going to talk about that. But let me show you one or two things first. Then we'll talk about that. Then we'll show you a few more things that sold. And then we'll go inside to the eBay cave and see what sold in there. I think we have one homeschool hustler store sale as well and a viewer gift as well. Let's go take a look. First thing back here, we have a uh, pair of jeans, a couple pairs of jeans, actually. Here's my phone dinging. I should probably turn that off before I do videos. So this is in our New Hampshire bin. We have every once in a while, I put, I usually put jeans in bags and put markings on them. But lately I've just not quite had enough time so I just threw these on. I actually partly did it because I knew they would sell really quickly because I put them in a lot of two. These came from the Picker's Paradise sale. If you go back there, that guy had a ton of jeans. And it was really tempting because everything was so cheap, but he was asking big prices on the jeans. I ended up lotting these two in with a bunch of stuff that I bought. So the price came down quite a bit. My guess is he didn't sell many of the jeans. Some of them were vintage, but some of them were not. So what I did is I picked out the true vintage here, the 3332 for both of them. They're 517s, they're orange tabs. I always look for the orange tabs. And then you go in and you look and they're made in the USA. So two made in the USA, orange tab 517 jeans. These sold for $55 plus shipping. And they came from the Pickers Paradise sale. I don't think I spent more than $55 at that sale. And we have made, I don't know if I want to say thousands, but definitely have made over a thousand dollars. And we still have stuff that I haven't even listed yet out of that sale. All right, I'm going to attempt to tell you this story right now before I show you some of these other things that sold. And you'll see the TV behind me here. This is Cameron from Gravity Goods. I got to really turn my phone off. Hold on. So this is Cameron from Gravity Goods. So here's what I got. I got two days ago, I think it was two days ago at this point, I got a message that somebody opened a request on me, and you know that happens every once in a while. I talked about it a week or so ago on a video. If you sell a bunch of stuff, things are going to go wrong. It's just inevitable, and then you have to deal with them. But then I opened it up, and I saw it was for an Enemyan. I'm like, oh my goodness, and then I saw the message, and it was a viewer. I'm like, what in the world is going on here? So here's a bit of a backstory, and I don't even know if I know the whole backstory because I haven't ever communicated with Cameron other than to tell him that I was going to put this on this show, and I hope he doesn't mind, and he said, hey, thumbs up, no problem. So either Cameron is a genius who did this because he wanted a shout-out, or he just was being honest about this thing and said, hey, this thing hadn't showed up, and I think that's the case. Not that you're not a genius, Cameron. Uh, he does have a YouTube channel. He never mentioned to me he had a YouTube channel, just FYI. Never mentioned it. I just decided I'd look it up and just see just in case. Because he does have an Instagram handle, Gravity Goods. And when I saw that, I thought, you know what, I wonder if he has a YouTube channel. So at any rate, long story short, I'm going to probably, if I can remember, put a few things inside. I'm just going to throw a couple pictures up. I might even throw a picture of him up in here. And then maybe the request itself. I don't want to give away any information that I shouldn't. But the request was essentially, hey, the Animan hadn't showed up. What are you going to do? And he opened a request. So typically I would think you'd send me a message, and this happens from time to time. Had two in a man be really, really late. One never showed up, 
and one got like ran over by a truck in Canada or something. I mean, it had like tire marks on it. And so usually I'm just gonna take care of it and send another one. So what happened here is this thing was sent out almost, it's about, it's been about two and a half weeks at this point, almost three weeks at this point, and it never showed up. The tracking just kind of disappeared after about four or five days. So the tracking, I think, disappeared in Portland. Now, I don't know about y'all if this is happening a lot lately to you, but I have had a few of these delays lately, and they sporadically happen from time to time. They have for years. Usually it happens to me in California. It doesn't happen many other places. Well, I've had two happen in Portland in the last month, and two happen in Minnesota in the last month. I don't know if it has any correlation to some of the things that are going on in the country or not. I'd like to think not, but it is interesting that it happened twice in Portland, Portland itself, and then twice in two different places in Minnesota. But that's neither here nor there at this point. The fact of the matter is the post office somehow had this thing delayed. You know, I don't know exactly what happens to these things. I feel like they, they end up in the dryer, like the socks that you can't find, you know? You never have the match in the dryer. I feel like that's what's going on with the Inaman. The Inaman disappears somewhere. Who the heck knows? At any rate, Cameron sent me this message. Actually, he sent me a request. So, Cameron, here's the question for you. Did you ever send me a message on the messaging system? Now, I'll tell you what, and I, this is not an excuse. Yeah, it is. It's an excuse. I have been really bogged down at work, and it's difficult for me to get through. I try to still answer the comments on the videos, both videos on Commonwealth Picker and Commonwealth Flipper, and I haven't been able to keep up with that. And lately, there's been so many messages on eBay itself that I can't keep up with the eBay messages. I mean, I'm getting like 40 a day. It's just crazy. I can't hardly keep up with it. So it's very possible, Cameron, you sent me a message. And if you did, I apologize. But if you didn't, send me a message, man. I'd have taken care of it, I promise. The good end of the story is, I think within 24 hours of the case being opened, I had already seen the case close that quickly. So the case was open. I saw it at school and I'm like, well, I'm going to have to deal with this when I get home. And by the time I got home, see, the case was open the previous day and I hadn't even seen it yet. I saw it at school, got home. By the time I got home, the case was closed. The item had arrived. So I think all told it was like two weeks and a couple of days before the thing showed up. So at any rate, I'm just happy you got there, Cameron, and I'm happy you have it. And thank you for the message on Instagram. And let's everybody go check out his channel. There it is right there, Cameron. So what is that, Elmo right there? All right. Thanks so much. Anyway, I'm glad you got it. Thanks, Cameron. Hey, first item up is a full price Walmart retail arbitrage item. Not often do you do that. You know, you usually wait for those discounts. So... This is a Disney uh, wrapping paper. This is Nightmare Before Christmas. They were $2.98, so we're like $9 and change into this thing with taxes. Let's just say 10 bucks. They sold for $23 plus shipping. So after fees and everything, we're not making much. We're making about $10. So spending a little less than $10, making about $10 on these. But they're really easy. They fit in the uh, tube, a long tube, and we'll just put them in there real quick. Maybe put a little bit of paper at the top, a little bit of paper at the bottom. It should take about three minutes to package these things up and ship them out. So it's definitely worth the time for me. And I think I just saw when I told you I had to turn my phone off. I think I saw another one sell. So you'll probably see another one of these tomorrow. This is another Liberty V-neck size large. We've sold tons of these, 15 bucks a piece. Bought them for two. So we're making a little bit of money on them, seven, eight dollars a piece. And they are uh, almost gone. I think there's only two left. <laughs> Pepper came in to visit. What are you doing, girl? All right, here's another terrific clothing sale to go along with those 517 jeans right there. This one is a fairly well-used Harley jacket that I picked up. I think I paid five bucks for it. It's skinned up a little bit, I think, somewhere. I know it is somewhere. Maybe it is on this side. On this jacket. There it is right there. And so this one could very easily be like an $80 jacket, but I got 50 bucks for it because there's a couple little holes right there where somebody, I don't know, probably got in an accident of some sort and scuffed it up. So this jacket is out the door for $50 
plus shipping, and it's going to be a nice little about a $40 profit. Those are like a $45 profit, so $85 just selling two pieces of clothing. Technically three, I suppose, but two sales. Pepper's back there getting in an empty box. I'm about to get that cat out of here. All right, and she's my favorite now. All right, y'all, the strangest things sell on Bonanza. I think this is uh, sale number eight on Bonanza in like two months, so we don't sell a lot. I would say only one of those sales has been fairly conventional. It's been a Mary Kay item. Strange stuff, weird stuff sells. Now this I would have never guessed would have sold on there. It's a used Liberty University coffee tumbler that I probably paid 50 cents for. I don't even remember buying it to be honest with you. And this sold for 18 bucks. And I think I can keep it first class if I put it in a six by four by four box and then put a four by four by four box on top. I think it just stays first class. So you know we'll make like 10 bucks on the deal. So it's not a huge money maker, but it's better than nothing and it didn't sell on eBay. So I'll definitely take it. For those of you who ask about Bonanza, I don't really go into great depth and detail on it. It's just a platform that you can sell on that you do not have to list on. It automatically takes everything from eBay. It automatically delists. So that item, I just went to check because somebody said that they did Bonanza and they weren't delisting items. And I'm like, that's not my experience. They delist every time. And so immediately after it sold on Bonanza, I went and checked my unsolds on eBay and it had delisted the item. So that was cool. And I like that. I love Bonanza so far. It's been nothing but extra money. No extra work whatsoever, except for when I go to ship it, I have to go first to Bonanza and then I got to go manually put the information into Pirate Ship and ship it that way. All right, I grabbed you real quick. I'm gonna show you one more sale. And I love this sale because it's like extras. You know, whenever you buy lots of video game stuff, there's sometimes things in there that are like, eh, I don't know if I really wanna sell that, but I'm glad I sold this one because it sold for $20 plus shipping. And it's gonna be a pretty decent little profit because it's all pure profit at this point. All right, as I just said that, it's actually $18 plus shipping. And I think it's in here, but I'm not sure. Yep, there it is right there. There's two of them. And that's why I ended up listing it. This is the kind of thing that's a bit of a pain in the butt to list and it takes up a little space and it's not much money. But I ended up doing it because there were two of these dance pads and they were identical. I'm like, well, one listing, two dance pads, 18 bucks a piece, and then you have to ship it. And they're used, but it's in okay condition. It's not amazing. You can see right here, there's a little cut right there. There's a little cut right here, but it's not too bad. And they were working. We tested them up and they're good to go. And so this sold for $18 plus shipping. I think we'll just do a 12 by 12 by eight box right here for that one. Either that or I might have to find something that's back there. So $18 plus shipping, it's about a $15 profit. Hey, here's a when in doubt part or outer for sure. This is an old Regal Poly Pot. I don't know if you remember those. They're like mini coffee, like percolator things. I think that's what they are anyways. And I picked one up. It was either like 50 cents or free. I remember the sale I bought it from. It's working on two years ago. And sometimes I pick those up and just pull the cords and I sell those cords because you can make like seven, eight dollars profit on the cord. And so if it's in a free box, I'll grab it. Or if it's 50 cents, I'll grab it. And then occasionally, if I don't have one up on eBay, I'll also take the lid off and I'll try and sell the lid for around eight bucks. I think that's 781. So it's not much, but you know, three dollars and fifty cents profit or three and a quarter, something like that. For something like this, plus eight, you know, you're making eleven bucks on two sales on a free item or a 50 cent item. So I don't know, it took forever to sell though. So I'm not suggesting doing this, but I have a mind that works like that, I guess. When in doubt, part it out and make eleven bucks. You know, would you pick up a couple of video games that you could make eleven dollars on? I think most people would, but they would never pick up stuff like that. All right, one going to Steven, one going to Terry, one going to Rhonda here, and she left a message. I started selling on eBay in June, and I'm completely hooked. That happens, you know. I started out watching you and several others on YouTube prior to that time. You know, it's kind of crazy. You know, we all kind of enter, if you're watching this now, you watch probably watch other YouTube resellers, unless you're my mumsy or my mom. <laughs> I don't know that you watch other YouTube resellers, but you get the point. I remember the first one I watched was Craigslist Hunter, Pete, and then, you know, there's this logical progression. And it is absolutely unreal to me and very flattering that somebody would say that they watched me first which is amazing. So thank you. I enjoy your channel and the information. I have a little mini farm myself. 11 chickens, that's how many we have, I think. Three horses, I don't have any of those. Three cats, I do have one of those. Four barn cats, 
and a little dog. Eh, it's pretty close right there. So, except for we don't have the barn cats and the horses, but everything else is spot on. Nothing like living in the country. God bless and best wishes for you and your family. My eBay store name is Southern Digs, and I hope this Inman helps boost my store's performance. And we do too. We hope it does as well. And he said it your way. Hey, got another one headed out. Cat and Josh. Hey, Kevin, my husband and I just got into reselling together. I have always been into it, but he's new to it. I got him into watching you on YouTube, and he watches all of your videos. That's awesome. I'm glad you got him into it. We are also from Virginia Eastern Shore, to be exact. We have been doing really well and even opened an antique booth. That's awesome. So we just, me and my wife, just got done filming a antique booth video. In a couple weeks here, we're going to go on a, a little bit of a vacation. We have all these animals now, like the last viewer. And so I had to get somebody to come over here and they're going to have to spend a week at my house just because I got so many animals I can't leave. <laughs> Used to be you could take the dog and have somebody babysit the dog. But now I got all these cats and chickens and... It's a mess. I wanted to grab one of these for Q4 to hopefully keep things moving for us. We also have a new YouTube channel called Parker Pickers. Parker Pickers. Okay. Thank you for all you do, Kat and Josh Parker. So I have to check out Parker Pickers, y'all. Parker Pickers. Thanks. All right. This one's going to Rafa. I think I pronounced that right. Hey, Kevin, thanks for the great content on your channel. I love watching your daily sales and learning new bolos. The same week you sold through the Bible, J. Vernon McGee, I found that same set too and knew to pick it up from watching your videos. That's awesome. Thank you. You can check out my channel. My YouTube is Resale Rafa. Resale Rafa. And follow my flipping dollar. My mom and I are picking and flipping Oklahoma. Thanks again for all the flip tips. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. And this is headed to you and to your mother. Thanks. Hey, let's get one more in here really quick. This one's going out to Craig. Y'all, this is about the bottom of the barrel here. So I'm just going to officially say we have more than 100 left. Okay, we do. But a lot of those are misfit. I think what we're going to do is end up selling those on the CommonwealthPicker.com store once the other ones run out here. So we're going to keep a few. This crate right here we're going to keep because I just like it there. It's kind of our mascot, you know. And then we have another crate out there in the Commonwealth cabin that we're going to keep, but we're going to sell off the rest. I think there's just about 100 left, and then there's going to be those misfits that we'll sell as well. And there's probably 100 or so misfits. So it's not like you got to rush or anything. Please don't rush, actually. They are definitely coming to an end. We've sold about 1,800 at this point, which is amazing. So let me read this one, and then we'll go back out there. Kevin, I found your channel three or four months ago when I was searching content videos for eBay reselling. I have always been a buyer and a seller of random things, and I decided to make a sincere effort at this to generate some income for my extras. In less than 60 days, I have 37 sales on a wide variety of items. That's awesome. I appreciate the information that you provide and have used much of it to help me with my part-time business. Thank you, Craig. So, Craig, that's awesome. Thank you. I love it. I see you have quite a bit of feedback there. And I'm glad it's going well. Hey, let me know in the comments out there when he says extras. How many of you who are watching this right now, how many of you out there are doing this for extras? Vacation money, extra money into retirement, extra money towards the kids' college fund. I want to know what your extras are. If you're just a part-timer who's not dependent on the income but would like it so you could do certain things, what are those certain things? I want to see that in the comments and get an idea of who's watching out there. Thanks. Thanks, Craig. All right, you guys are awesome as always. Thank you so much for all those in man sales. That's just amazing. I don't know what we're going to do when they're all gone. So anyway, thank you all, and we'll head out there for something. I'm not quite sure what, but you guys are awesome, and we'll see you next time. All right, I'm out here with Turner, and I'm out here with Sophie. Hi, Sophie. She's not going to say hi. And I had a gift from Patriot Picker. Uh, Fred and Charlie's their uh, other business. And he says, forgot to bring this during our cabin visit. Hope you can find a place for it, Patriot Picker, Chris. And so, yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. This is, I, at first I thought, you know, this is like a plaque for the wall. I thought maybe putting it over here. And then I thought, you know, maybe it's an ashtray. But I think it's a plaque, but there's no place, you know, really to hook some. I guess you could right there. But I love it. And I will find a place for it somewhere in here for sure. I might even take it to school. But I love it because it's got, you know, this is, I'm assuming that's maybe the Queen Mary down there. And, of course, I lived right here, about where the eye is. You coming to check it out? That's where I live. Where does he live? We've been there before. You where were a tiny live? little baby, though. Where does he live? He, where does he live? He lives, like, uh, over here Florida? in Virginia. Yeah. 
<laughs> you like that in Virginia too? Yeah, he does. Okay. And so I got a cactus here. I think that might be Griffith Observatory, which would of course be down here. And then Hollywood, the film and the fishing and Golden Gate Bridge and the gold mining up there. My brother was born in Eureka and we spent a lot of time in Willow Creek up here. I was born in Hanford which I really am not very familiar with because I was just a baby when I was there. But anyway, thank you so much, Chris. We appreciate it. And Turner's going to show us what's sold. All right, what what's sold? It's a doll. It's a Cabbage Patch doll, right? And he was a little upset that Reagan wasn't here today, so he had to do the doll, didn't you? <laughs> so you don't like doing the doll. Normally, Reagan would do the doll. Blue Ridge Mama listed that for us, and didn't she, Sophie? Yes. And I bought it for a dollar to say, oh, that I don't know if you've seen or not yet, but it's over 17 plus shipping. Cabbage Patch, you know, they don't go for a whole ton of money. Some do, but uh, a lot of them don't. And the more modern ones don't. But you know what? This one had a nice little dress on and everything was good to go. So it sold for 17 plus shipping. And Turner's going to help me ship it out today. And Sophie's going to help too. Okay? Yep. All right. So how does Sophie help? I don't know. She doesn't really. She's a pain in the butt. Yeah. But we love her, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Tell everybody bye.